and many of us have been thinking lately about small cap stocks, well, today I have five with some pretty serious potential. Hold on to your seatbelts, folks. This is going to be a good one. Small cap stocks are those companies with a market cap between 300 million and uh, 2 billion. These stocks are often young, dynamic companies with some serious growth potential. That potential, along with room to grow their market cap, can be a recipe for uh, outperforming the bigger companies. A lot of times, these small cap companies are undervalued because investors, well, they're, they're kind of focused on the bigger companies and these ones can often get missed. However, that can change as their prices begin to pump and investors start to take notice. Sometimes, a little thing can indeed become a big deal. Sort of like that we click of the sub button becoming a pretty big deal for the channel. When it comes down to qualifying for today's list, there were a few considerations I used to help assist me find these stocks. It goes without saying that they had to be small cap. In addition to that, I also didn't want penny stocks, so they did need to have a minimum value of at least $5. I was also wanting to find stocks with at least some dividends, so for this list we wanted a yield of at least 1.5%, which, well, yeah, it did eliminate some huge stocks like HMM.A, for example. I also wanted at least a 10% performance on their year-to-date price. Finally, I also wanted a return on equity of at least 15% as this gives me a little bit more confidence in the company's future potential. Today's list is sorted by their year-to-date total returns. So, without any further ado, let's do this. Kicking off this list, we have Headwater Exploration Inc. with a ticker of HWX. They are based out of Calgary, and they are an oil and gas exploration and production company that focuses on acquiring, developing, and producing oil as well as natural gas resources primarily in Western Canada. At the time of recording, their price comes in at $7.31, and their market cap, they're one of the ones on the higher end of the spectrum, $1.74 billion. They have a beta of 1.63, so you're going to get a little bit of volatility with this one. Their earnings per share come in at 0.78, and they have a price to earnings ratio of 9.37. Their return on equity, that comes in at 30.64%, and they have a return on assets of 17.88%. Looking at the debt to equity ratio, that comes in at a very nice 0.13%. When it comes to dividends, they have a yield of 5.472%. It is a quarterly dividend of 10 cents per share. The payout ratio on that dividend, that comes in at 51.28%. Switching over to returns, their three-year return on investment, that comes in at 82.75%. Factor in those dividends, we have a total return of 107.75%. On the one year, their return on investment, negative 2.27%. Their dividends do save them a little bit, bringing that total return into the positive at 3.07%. They did have a little bit of a struggle, hence the lower one-year numbers, but they have bounced back nicely because of that year-to-date return on investment, 16.59%, sprinkle in their dividends, total return, 22.97%. So that's not too shabby. This company is well-positioned for future growth and success in a sector that is, well, of course, it's expected to see higher demand in the coming years. Coming in at number four, we have PHX Energy Services with a ticker of PHX. They are also based out of Calgary, and they provide horizontal and directional drilling technology and services to oil and natural gas companies. Their current price comes in at $10.21, and they have a market cap of $484.85 million. Their beta, that comes in at 2.35, making them more than twice as volatile as the market average. Their earnings per share, they come in at 1.91. They have a price-to-earnings ratio of 5.35. Their return on equity, it's a nice looking 45.23%. Return on assets coming in at 11.66%. When it comes to their debt to equity ratio, still not too bad, 20.04%. Dividend wise, they've got a pretty high yield, 7.835%, another quarterly dividend. This time though, 20 cents per share. Their payout ratio is actually a little lower than you might expect, 36.65%. Looking at their returns, on the three-year return on investment, that comes in at 130.47%. 
Add in the dividends, we get a total return of 165.46%. On their one year, that return on investment, that comes in at 45.03%. Total return, 55.68%. And this year, year to date, that return on investment comes in at 26.05%. Sprinkle in those dividends, we get a total return of 33.46%. These guys are a key player in the oil field services sector. And as global energy demand keeps rising, so should the demand for their services. This is not a bad position to be in. Taking our third spot, we have Medical Facilities Corporation with a ticker of DR. They are based out of Toronto and they own and operate specialty surgical hospitals and ambulatory surgical centers in the U.S. Their current price at time of recording comes in at $13.88. They have a market cap of $339.65 million. Their beta is just a little more than less as volatile as the market average, coming in at 0 0.48. Their earnings per share, that comes in at 0 0.87. Their price to earnings ratio, that's coming in at 15.95. And they have a return on equity of 38.26%. That return on assets, 12.45%. Their debt to equity ratio, that's coming in at 99.96%. Looking at their dividend, they have a yield of 2.594%. Another quarterly dividend of nine cents per share. The payout ratio on that, 38.13%. Looking at their three year, the return on investment comes in at 67.63%. Factor in the dividends, we get a total return of 79.35%. On the one year, that return on investment comes in at 63.29%. Add in those dividends, we get a total return of 67.21%. On the year to date, that return on investment comes in at 55.08%. Total return after we add in the dividends, 57.90%. The healthcare sector is expected to explode as more boomers move into those years where medical services are a uh, much higher priority. This company is well positioned to be there for the increased demand and their shareholders are there for those uh, returns. In our almost top spot at number two, we have Bird Construction with a ticker of BDT. They are based out of Mississauga, Ontario and they have become a community favorite for sure. They are a leading construction company that operates in everything from industrial to residential sectors. Their current price comes in at $25.45 and they have a market cap of $1.40 billion. Their beta pretty average at 1.10. Their earnings per share come in at 1.42 and they have a price to earnings ratio of 18.24. That return on equity, 25.39%. Their return on assets, 4.06%. I am a little surprised. I actually did think that ROA would be a little higher. Their debt to equity ratio, 55.15%. They have a dividend. They're the only monthly dividend payer. Their yield is 2.164% with that monthly dividend of 4.7 cents per share. The payout ratio on that, 25.98%. On their three-year, that return on investment comes in at a whopping 200.12%. Factor in the dividends, holy banana bread, we get a total return of 215.21%. On their one year, the return on investment comes in at 176.63%. Total return after we add in the dividends, 181.80%. Looking at this year, year to date, that return on investment comes in at 76.25%. After we sprinkle in those dividends, total return 78.05%. This company is very well positioned to take advantage of the overall push towards construction which also includes the push for uh, more housing. In addition to that, their diversification across multiple sectors lowers their overall risk big time. I really like this company. In our top spot at number one, we have Propel Holdings with a ticker of PRL. They are based out of Toronto and they are a tech company that provides digital platforms and solutions to small and medium sized businesses. Their current price at time of recording comes in at $24.41. They have a market cap of 903.23 million. Their beta is kind of volatile, 1.76. Their earnings per share come in at 1.26 and they have a price to earnings ratio of 20.88. That return on equity, that comes in at 33.67%. The return on assets, 14.39%.
The debt to equity ratio, 191.29%. So uh, they're, they're, they're a little on the high side when it comes to debt. Looking at their dividends, they do have a yield of 1.976%. It is a quarterly dividend of 13 cents per share. The payout ratio on that comes in at 34.40%. On their three-year, that return on investment comes in at 140.26%. Factor in the dividends, we get a total return of 151.33%. On the one year, that return on investment comes in at 194.81%. Factor in the dividends, we get a total return 200.30%. When we look year to date, that return on investment comes in at 88.64%. Sprinkle in some of those dividends, we do get a total return of 90.57%. That's uh, that's absolutely not too shabby at all. They do operate within the growing fintech sector, which is a great place to be as the sector and demand continues to grow. Propel is well positioned to take advantage of the growing sector. And that means, well, that means more profits for their shareholders. I do like this list quite a bit, and I think we have some, uh, some strong winners here. Bird Construction is already in the 0 to 100k challenge, and a few more of these could be potential future ads. If you are interested in any of these stocks we looked at today, don't forget to put in a whole heaping helping of due diligence before you place any of your hard-earned money on the table. <laughs> Let's continue that learning journey. Check out this video on CDRs, and I will see you in the next video.